Okay, so day two of Joe Biden healing the world and healing the nation and the world and healing. He says, when I'm speaking to foreign leaders, I'm telling them America is going to be back. We're going to be back in the game. And then I wait for a collective eye roll. <laughs> uh, Johnny Grass says, what the F does this even mean that America is back? Well, Johnny... It means, come on, you know the thing. <laughs> Listen, fat. If you don't know what it means, Johnny, this is what it means. America's back, baby. U.S. military convoy enters northeast Syria, January 21st. Inauguration day. They're back in. U.S. military convoy enters the northeast. Empire's got to operate through COVID, baby. Mm. We can't get a vaccine distributed, but we can still set the world on fire. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. America is back. Back. A large U.S. military convoy entered northeastern Syria on Thursday. Syrian state news reports citing sources on the ground. There you go. According to the report, the convoy included 40 trucks and armored vehicles and was backed from the air by helicopters. Mm -hmm. And it entered Syria from Iraq via the Al-Walid crossing to bring arms and logistical equipment to the bases. At the same time, reports that some 200 U.S. troops arrived in the Hasaka province on helicopters. Iraq, Syria, it's like a reunion tour of countries we bombed. It's nice. <laughs> According to the report, the troops are set to deploy on the nearby oil fields, with Kurdish-controlled eastern Syria rich in energy resources. They're sending the troops right to the oil fields. In late 2020, then-U.S. President Donald Trump ordered U.S. troops withdrawn from that area to redeploy in Iraq. They're being deployed directly onto oil fields, an airy way of reminding people exactly why they're there. By the way, one-third of Biden's Pentagon transition team hails from organizations financed by the weapons industry. Wow. Yes, that is, of course, that is true. If that's because, you know, you know what they say, one out of three or I mean, two out of three, uh, you know, the thing. <laughs> In 2017, Blinken, that's his new secretary of state, praised the Trump administration for bombing Syrian airfields. So so Joe Biden's new secretary of state praised Donald Trump when when he bombed Syrian airfields and called for a move toward a negotiation of trans transition of power a goal which he admitted eluded the Obama administration. Blinken served as Deputy National Security Advisor and Deputy Secretary of State in the Obama administration. His support for the invasion of Iraq and the assault on... He, has, he supported the Iraq and Libya. That's awesome. He also supported more aggressive military measures against Syria. Does he regret any of this? No. The answer is no. By the way, the U.S. is running out of bombs to drop. That was uh, 2015 under Barack Obama. They ran out of bombs. So there you go. Uh, there's the beauty of the, you know, the compassionate Joe Biden, the guy who's all love and wants to put his arms around everyone, as they say on CNN. Uh, on Inauguration Day, uh, ramped up the war machine in Syria. Are you happy about that, Graham? You've been to war, haven't you? Yeah, I've been to Iraq and Afghanistan as a comedian. I've seen war up close, and I'm here to tell you that I'm sure the people of Syria are just overjoyed that now the American troops are back with helicopters and missiles and rockets that say Black Lives Matter and have rainbow flags on them. I mean, it's uh, going to be a great time for everybody. Um, you know, this is the American empire, and this is the thing that, like, why liberals— and I used to call myself a liberal, and now I call myself an anti-war pro-labor socialist because liberals are in dancing in the streets. They don't care. They don't care. That this is happening. And because Trump pulled troops out and Biden is putting them back, they love, you know, they they hate Trump so much that they're going to be like, see, Biden's going to handle this better. Like they're okay with war. <laughs> they don't care. And it's mystifying to me. And there's no excuses now. For these liberal idiots, there's no excuses. The Democrats have the White House, Congress, and the Senate. So they, all, I know they all want to go back to brunch, but uh, and the other thing, we so we can't. We we're supposed to get two grand. That's been now it's fourteen hundred. We're not going to get it on Biden's first day. We're going to get it March, maybe April now. But we definitely got money to roll troops into Syria to guard oil. That we got money for. But you and we can't get stimulus money. We can't get free health care. We can't get a we vaccine. Got, we can't get vaccines to people. 
We don't know where the vaccine's at. We're supposed to have 100 million in 100 days. And it's like, well, he's already two days into his presidency. Have we have we sent out a, two million vaccines? Nope. But so, we, well, we have sent troops back into Syria. Yep. Yep. So that's uh, what people, if people think this is, this like, oh, his cabinet's so diverse. It's it's so, di- I mean, the, again, the people of the Middle East are going to be so ecstatic that women and people of color are now going to be bombing them. Um, that it's like, and so diverse. It's yay. And nobody's asking, is there any diversity of ideology in Biden's cabinet? Oh, shut up, burn bro, or whatever we're going to be told. So it's it's just preposterous to watch this happen. We all knew this. All of us real lefty progressives saw knew this was going to happen if Biden became president. I'm glad Trump's gone, but I'm not. There's no way I'm cheering for any of this Biden Obama 2.0 warism. But again, that's when the left went to sleep. And they're going to go back to sleep again. Uh, I don't know how they can go back to sleep because a lot of them are unemployed now. So that's the thing, right? So they're shutting down like a third of the economy. I saw a, a, a statistic today that uh, 51% of uh, minority-owned businesses couldn't make their rent payment. And uh, 30-some percent of uh, overall businesses couldn't make their rent in January. Uh, yeah. Small There's business. A- that is small business. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. There, there's, there's a, there's a massive, I mean, commercial real estate bubble mm-hmm. that's collapsing, and it, all, these bubbles were in place before COVID, and they only got bigger during COVID. Yes, and you've got the evictions that are looming over everybody's head. I mean, I know. So they keep pushing those evictions. They did it again. They pushed. So Joe Biden pushed off the. That's better. Like that's something, right? They they put off the evictions, but what do you do? What is your plan for? So now, in, whenever they pushed them off for three months or whatever, I don't even know what they pushed them off for. So now those people owe back rent and they still haven't had a job, but they get to live in all that anxiety. <laughs> yes. With with now instead of seven months of back rent, they've got eight and nine and ten months of back, back rent, rent, which is just that's got to help. That's not going to help. And so Biden even took floated out the idea before the inauguration of rent forgiveness in his new stimulus plan. Well, suddenly his stimulus plan. Well, that's not till March, maybe not till April. So even the idea of rent forgiveness, which is what we should be doing. Because other countries like in Western Europe and Australia, they were giving their citizens 80 to 90 percent of their salary so everybody could pay their rent. So not only do you have the, the, the as you talk about black owned businesses, all these people back on rent, there's a bunch of landlords. All landlords aren't evil big corporations. A lot of landlords are just small business owners. Right. You know, it's, it's a married couple or something. They just right. own a little rental property. Well, now they're jammed up. Right. So now so they don't the, get they, they, they still have to pay their mortgage. Right. I mean. Yes. So what's going to happen? What's Biden going to do? And boy, it's going to take time to get Congress in the Senate. But man, I mean, the minute his hand came off the Bible, it was like, send the troops back to Syria. And, and, and why not? Why not uh, uh, give everybody rent money? How about that? Instead of just why not just give the people the rent money so then the landlords can pay their freaking mortgage. They can pay their rent and everybody's happy. Why can't you do that? They get, They can. They just won't. And the banks would get money under that scenario too, Jimmy. Correct. Like the banks would be made whole because they're not getting paid. I mean, I know a lot of you know rental property owners that are like, I just had to call my bank and say, put me on a forbearance. I can't pay. So everybody would be made whole. Biden could have, uh, he could have through executive order passed Medicare for all. He could have declared yes. a national emergency. There's a, he could have done that on day one. He could have done that. He could have done it. Like he could have done student debt forgiveness. Eighty five percent of all student debt is federally backed. So you don't need to go through Congress. Again, the president can just go, boom, you don't have to pay that back. That would infuse all this. Imagine you're back on your rent. You're behind on rent. You can't work. And you've got a student debt loan bill coming at you every month. He could put infuse trillions of dollars into the economy just through executive order. But he can't do that. He's got to go back and protect oil in Syria. (laughs) That's what he's doing. Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you to join our premium program and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video. 